from Tampa. Okay, so we're getting the hang of that. Okay, fantastic. Uh, next, we're going to look at the emoji feature. So down at the bottom of your screen, you should see a little smiley face reaction. And if you click on that, you should be able to uh, react to everything that is going on on screen in real time. So um, the question here is, how do you feel about GameStop? And choose emoji that best fits that. How do you feel about GameStop? And let's try and keep this one to. Uh, <laughs> and if you, uh, if, in the, right in the middle of your screen there, not in the chat feature, there's a separate emoji uh, button. So not in the chat feature. Blue heart. All right, perfect. And then last thing, a little bit more uh, relative to this event, is what is your favorite podcast? And go ahead and type that in the chat. And let's see what we got here. I will start things off. Uh, I listen to the Robin Hood Snacks podcast every once in a while. And building on the uh, news of the day, I figured I would put that out there. Jack, I've never heard of that. I'm going to have to check it out. Do it. That'll be great. More music than podcasts. Great start, Jake. Well, of course, Local Legends. Local Legends is our uh, local podcast here in Portsmouth. Somebody mentioned that. Okay. All right. So uh, to kick things off, uh, I've got a couple of notes here. Message Derek with uh, the name of any faculty member who is giving you extra credit for this event, and he'll get that taken care of. Um, if you are joining because you got an email from the Shawnee Entrepreneurship Club, um, let us know if you are interested in that. On our website is a link to an interest form, uh, and that website is ssuinnovation.com. And you can message Derek uh, in the direct chat at the top right of your screen, click direct. Uh, or if you put it in the live chat, it's a little bit, uh, it might get lost. If you send it directly to him, uh, he can make sure he gets that taken care of. Uh, but we won't let you miss out on any extra credit, so rest assured there. Uh, he'll bribe. All right. So getting started here, uh, I'd like to welcome Jack Hughes to the stage. Uh, he is the co-founder of Syncify and COO. Uh, Syncify is one of London's fastest growing startups, uh, building the world's first truly social audio platform. So I'm going to actually let Jack give an expanded introduction uh, of himself and the work he's doing. And Jack, you can take it from there. Sure. Hello, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. You might want to use the emojis at some point to uh, say, OK, I want to know. OK, so reactions that I would like to know people who are listening to me. The guy on the right hand, the, 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 the startled emoji, the surprise, if we can use that one to know that I'm being heard, that would be OK, cool. Yeah. All right. Loads of those. So I don't know if that's one person pressing loads or whether you're pressing that. But hello, everybody. Lovely to meet you in this interesting thing. Uh, never used AirMeet before, so fantastic. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm Jack. I am the co-founder and CEO of Syncify. We are a basically a podcasting app that allows you to synchronously and asynchronously listen to um, podcasts at the same time. But we've also creating a lot of features that allow you allow the system to basically be the new like only fans of podcasting and that kind of stuff. I don't know if there's a massive delay going on because I can see myself in delay. No, just me who's seeing me in delay. Fantastic. Yep, you sound fine. You Fantastic. Sound <laughs> okay, great. Uh, yeah, we've, uh, we started a year ago. We are basically, uh, we just finished the Techstars program in London, and we are going through a couple of beta launches at the moment. And uh, I was going to do like a really extensive intro, but then David was like, I've got some questions for you anyway. So I figured I would let David do that, and I will try not, I will basically, my my ambition is to keep you guys all interested for as long as I'm here, because although it is an entrepreneurial society, the idea of having a generic Q&A or anything like that for the next 80 odd minutes it will, will just fill me with dread and fear. So bless you guys for taking ed, ed, like extra credits to be here or dropping by. I know it's half one on a Thursday. I'm not saying there's loads of stuff to do, but I do appreciate you guys coming by anyway, and I'll do my best to make sure we have some fun. Yeah, Jack, you had a, a great quote um about you've done some of these before and and about questions in general uh can you remind me what that was about uh performative questions 
You really yeah. don't, do don't, a- don't ask me things because you think it's a good thing to ask because it'll make you look good. Uh, I don't care that you think it's a good, like if you ask me things about tech scale ups and what I think is the next big thing, I can answer that. But if you're here to ask questions because you think it'll make you look good as opposed to actually a good question that you're already interested in, I'll be able to spot it. And I'd much rather people ask stupid questions because they feel naive. I'd much rather ask people questions about how to do the basic things to get to entrepreneurial stuff than, ah, you know, how do you, how do you know if you've reached product market fit or, or any of these kind of things? I'm, ge- I'm genuinely interested in helping you guys um, with whatever you want to do, whatever your journey is, whether it's in entrepreneurial things or whether it's in tech. You know, you might want to be an amazing lawnmower for all I care, like someone who just spends their time doing that kind of stuff. Anything that comes to your mind that is remotely, you know, on topic, then please feel free. It'll make it way more interesting. My answers otherwise will go into vague investor jargon, which no one really wants to pay attention to. That is an excellent introduction for us to kick off here. Uh, So for people who have not attended one of our speaker series events before, uh, I'm going to ask Jack a few questions to get things started. And if you all want to think of questions as we go along and put them into the questions bar, I see someone just put the first question in there. Um, So that is exactly where questions will go. And I'm going to give that an upvote. And we will ask that. um, That'll be the first uh, community Q&A, audience Q&A that we get to. Um, So... Jack, my first question here is maybe a little bit of a a standard question here. Um, I read that Syncify looks to reverse the nature of social media through its platform. Yeah. Can you tell us what that means? Sure. Uh, Social media nowadays has become about making yourself the object of the media. Basically, people take selfies and upload them and people then conversation, create conversations around that. It's the, it's the equivalent of going up to a mirror and having a conversation with yourself or other people basically coming and looking at you, talking in the mirror about yourself. No one is engaging with it. No one is doing anything other than trying to make themselves the, uh, the object of the conversation. We want to reverse the nature of social media by pe- making people actual social around the media. So right now, I'd actually say this event is <clears throat> it's better. It's, it's where we're, I, I'm to some extent, I am the media. So this is more of a social event. So it, it works, but I, 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 what I want to do is create something that allows people to be social around subject matter or something that's entertaining, motivating, or anything like that, as opposed to just, you know, taking a picture of you with a, you know, with your top off or something and being like, hey, guys, check this out. That is not, that is not how people should communicate. That is not how friendships are made. That, not, is, that is not how experiences are shared. When you consider your friendships and everything like that, whether it's with your parents, your, your lovers, uh, your your friends, your pets, or whatever, <clears throat> you'll find that the tapestry of your guys' relationships are built on over shared experiences. They're not built around liking people's Instagram photos. My best friends in my life, I have actual cherished experiences with. That is the nature of Syncify. What we're trying to do is make people be social around something as opposed to just being social around themselves. Yep, yeah, that is probably the best introduction that I could have gotten. Uh, you know, I, uh, I get together with some friends from around the country and we listen to a podcast once a week uh, on a call. So that's exactly the type of thing you're trying to do. Cool. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about how it does that? You know, with that big vision, how are you accomplishing? How does your product help accomplish that vision? What yeah, it it's actually like a re- this is what I find really weird. It's not a complicated idea at all. The idea that we don't have any way of being, okay, let me, let's, let's take, a, take a step back. The biggest and most successful new digital companies in the world are Twitch and Peloton and Hopin, right? These are the three from the most uh, in, recent, in recent memory. Hopin is online events. Twitch is sharing the experience of gaming online. And Peloton is sharing the experience of cycling online. Why do you think these things are so successful? Because what they're doing is they are marketing and creating a way for people to be social around something that they're going to do anyway. I'm always going to be like, if I'm on my bike on the inside or whatever, that's an isolated experience. As soon as I plug other people into what I'm doing or I can see what other people are doing, I'm making that into a shared experience. What we're doing with Syncify is create is basically allowing podcasts, which are happening anyway. People can start recording podcasts. Instead of me listening to them on my own or, you know, uh, going on a run and relying on an algorithm to tell me what to listen to. A classic London, by the way, absolutely 
bolting it down here. Like, could that be more quintessentially British? I do not know. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we're all we're doing is socialising the experience of podcasting and audio. There is nothing. There is nothing more uh, rigorously detailed or esoteric than that. It is, is, it is that. It is that simple. Um, mm. I don't know what else to really kind of say about that. Really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, how, what is your? Do you have a founder story? How did you come up with this idea? When did you come up with this idea? Yeah, uh, yeah, I did, yeah. just went through tech stars, but you know, obviously, you had the idea before then. What was that like? Sure. So, my co-founder, I know, co-founder and I have been friends for about twenty years. Uh, we went to school together. Uh, we both got into tech. Uh, I was selling in sales, and he was too busy being uh, an, he was busy being an entrepreneur and investor. He sold his first company straight out the back of university. So, much like uh, you guys will be. Imagine being 21, 22 and getting an exit. He sold a logistics company straight off the back and was like, oh, well, this is fine. This, I'm enjoying doing this. And then um, we we realized that a couple of things were were, were happening. And I'd already joined the startup called um, Sweatcoin, which became like the fastest growing health and fitness app ever. And I was advising another one because this is just the way things were going. And I had lost touch with Sam, my buddy. And he basically just said, look, he's already a podcaster. And just said, look, we could connect better. If I could just see what you were listening to and add a few comments and basically catch up with you by sharing an experience with you online, we're both heavy podcast listeners, that would be ideal. That would be something that I'd really enjoy doing. And it was like, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Cool. We can kind of put that up together. No real, no real like big, uh, uh, big over, overly futuristic ideas going on there. The thing is, the world started to go into a really weird tumble. Um, COVID happened, which basically meant that we were all confined to doing like this all the time to everyone, like to be friends with everyone. And on top of that, uh, Silicon Valley, all your bloody investors in uh, the Western America, discovered that social audio was a thing, which was great, great of them. Social Dilemma came out on Netflix. Not sure if any of you guys have seen that, but it basically showed that Facebook is taking all of your information and selling, selling constantly. And then this epic rise of podcasting, Joe Rogan getting given a given $100 million contract to go to Spotify, all, of, all this kind of stuff. And Syncify was just about three weeks ahead of all this, this stuff happening. It was March in 20, 2020. And all these little bits and pieces started happening, and we were just there. And so it went from a kind of idea that I was kind of interested that Sam proposed to, holy shit, we need to really do this now. This is something that we absolutely need to take, take part in and, uh, and, and go for. So we did. And we, yeah, we applied to Techstars, <clears throat> had a 0.5% acceptance rate. So it's basically mm-hmm. about 10 times harder to get into Techstars than it is to get into Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, any of those kind, any of those kind of things, which is weird because I would never have got been able to get into any of those universities. Uh, I just was never going to be able to do that. So it's ironic that I got let in, to be honest. And uh, yeah, three month program, graduated from that in January. And we're now, uh, as a company, raising money in order to release the product onto the market and kind of get some traction and, and all that kind of stuff really. And it's gone from being a, like just a casual idea to a company that's raising, uh, raising capital. Uh, also anyone who's interested in capital and raising money for companies, those are always questions I, I like answering because it's people don't like talking about money in startups. I'm completely transparent with that kind of stuff. So by all means, bosh them into that. Um, yeah. And we're now in the raising capital talking to you guys as well, because I think, I think when it comes to students, and especially student entrepreneurs, you've joined a university, then you'd be made to go, and you all want to be entrepreneurs or you know innovation or anything like that. You're all then made to go inside. You're all then not allowed to talk to each other in real life or go out to any bars or anything like that. So if I was, if I'm like a student in that kind of position, I want to be able to be incredibly um, <coughs> able to connect with like-minded people over something that I can learn from. I think this is why our company is fitting in with societies like yours a little bit more than just the general public, because we're actually saying, Hey, firstly, you can start your own podcast with us. Like if you want to be a podcaster, we'll give the opportunity to privately host a podcast on our channel and communicate with the audience. That's the first step. And you'll also be able to learn with each other properly rather than just watching a YouTube thing together and, and, and time it. That was way more than just a uh, founder story. I went on too far then, but that's okay. We're, we're all, we're all friends here. No, that's, that's really good. Cool. Um, one of my questions while you were speaking, uh, I know that, that some people might not be familiar with what exactly Techstars is. Mm-hmm. Uh, although a couple of years ago, uh, in 2018, we hosted a startup weekend. 
uh, here in Portsmouth, Ohio. And Techstars is the group uh, for everyone listening that has created this startup weekend concept. Um, but they have a lot more than that. Jack, is there anything you can say about what exactly Techstars is and, and what that accelerator program is? Sure. Uh, so, so Techstars is basically, um, yeah, I, it's, it's hard to kind of explain what it is uniquely, but it, mm-hmm. I, I kind of, I kind of explain explain it as like, um, you know, if you have, you know, <laughs> you know, if you're at uni, if you're, or you guys call it college or at school and you have some really, you have, you have all these different classes full of like hundreds of kids. And then you take like the top one from each class because they're the ones who are really, really bright and are and show a load of potential. And you basically give them like all the extra opportunities that all the other classmates don't get because they don't think they're going to be uh, like as successful. That's kind of what Techstars is, but in like idea form. So Techstars basically receives some like 2000 applicants with ideas for tech startups. And what it does is it takes an idea and the founders that are part of them uh, goes, okay, well, you've got something here that makes sense in terms of timing. You've got the right team, the, uh, the technology, everything that, that going on here. What we'll do is we're going to basically put you in front of some of the most prestigious people in the world. So CPOs of Monzo, CTOs of Ikea, Walt Disney, biggest investment arms in the world. Um, I think Textiles holds like 20 billion of holdings or something in tech companies anyway. So what it does is it goes, okay, well, we're going to help you. We're going to give you, first of all, we're going to give you a a check. So they give us a hundred thousand pounds, dollars $20,000. And we're going to invest in you for a start. So you're welcome. And then we're going to just basically with over three months, just grind you through this whole growing fast, furnishing your product, getting your idea together. And then we're going to present you to the world and uh, set you off on your own uh, with a big kind of like textiles graduate slip. One of the things it's, that it's pretty famous for is the mental madness. So imagine uh, having an idea and having your heart and soul in it. And then for uh, the first, for three and a half hours a day for the first three weeks, you basically just get told how crap your idea is over and over and over and over again. And uh, it's pretty, pretty draining because you know you don't make any money for the first while when you're doing a startup. And basically what they're doing is pushing you to make sure you're creating the right um, image methodology brand around the product. And you actually understand what you're trying to accomplish. It's called mental matters. And it's brutal because you're at Techstars, which is basically like doing a university degree. Then you're running the company, which is basically your full time job. And at the same time, you're hiring, which is like having a bar job on the side of all of this. So it's, it's pretty intense. And it, read, it readies you and introduces you to the tech startup world. Dave is checking yeah. out my analogy there and going, yeah, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, you, you obviously had to go through this application process with such a low acceptance rate, mm. you know, yeah. and you had an idea. How far along, with the, what does it take to get into a Techstars? You know, how much, do you, how much work do you need to do in developing this product to even think about applying to a Techstars? We had barely had, we honestly, it's a lot of it is timing, team, traction and product right timing team traction and product we had a product that was barely barely even a crappy app uh, you still can't get our app if you go on if you went to go on the um, app store by the way i saw one of the questions earlier you, we're not released yet you can get on android but we purposely make the android app so you don't share it so you can go and download it but it's not worth it at the moment i don't think it's just something you can play around with if you really want you can message me at jack at syncify.fm i will send you the uh, beta to play with um, what was your question again? So you, you mentioned, you know, this is what you had, the timing, teaming, timing, team, traction, and product. Oh, yeah. Where you text us. Yeah. So, yeah. so we had a really good idea that was ahead of the market. So Sam had seen something that was appearing. And because of COVID and all that, everyone was desperate for some, some kind of real shared experience online. Um, so Syncify was basically marketed as a new version of digital shared experiences in podcasting form and that wasn't really enough with me having my background in tech and marketing and him to kind of put us through the application uh i I also think that when it comes to a founding team you are really really grilled so without sam being heavily into the podcasting world and my experience in marketing and being kind of in with tech apps and all the, all the rest of it uh, we probably wouldn't have got to the dance but it's also about passion for completion uh, like you you can't get into you can't get into 
textiles without it being really clear that you are not doing anything else and you're but like and if you don't get into textiles you are going to take this company forward regardless and i think the burning passion that you have will drive the traction or make sure that the product takes shape in in some form and it's the what we found is that we we try to become inevitable so when we realize that this is absolutely what we could, should be doing and why we should be doing it that you you can't you can't lie to these people Eamon Carey, who's the md of textiles sees thousands upon thousands of personal investor pitches uh, a year and a thousand for textiles he'll see right through any of the crap that you are putting forward so i think passion really helped and us I, as i said i've known sam 20 years there's nothing i wouldn't do for him so that really helps as well because founder fallout is one of the main reasons why um why things fail or like why things go and we there's like i think he and i've been in physical fights before so i don't think there's really much that you can do to upset us uh and now i'll probably get a question which really upsets me later on but that's fine <laughs> <laughs> uh so i want to cover maybe a couple a couple more questions covering you know different topics and then go for it to the audience Q&A, uh, you know, I expect we'll have some more in-depth questions on, on some of these topics, right? Sure. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit, you mentioned, you know, the team and obviously your co-founder and you worked at some other tech startups. Um, what can you tell us about culture building at a company? It's not just about the product. You know, what can you tell us about really making it the right team and putting that together? Yeah, um, we were we were really lucky because our idea is actually trying to make society better, right? So I genuinely feel sorry for you guys uh, at university because when I was in a better position than we were, but if I had the capabilities uh, that you guys are already setting out in terms of being an entrepreneur um, right now or wanting to do something innovative, I probably would have started being an entrepreneur way, way, way earlier. Instead, all we were given were corporate relations and corporate targets and everything like that. And like, here's McKenzie and Co. Here's Deloitte Banking Group and all these kind of places. And it's, it's that kind of stuff. Our culture that we started right from the word go was people who want to de- deliver results for a better future for our generation and future generations in the tech world. That is absolutely what we want to do. And we wanted to transform the way that we uh, support each other online. And we genuinely believe that the system for people having shared experiences online outside of maybe gaming and Peloton are broken. What that means is when people are looking for shared experiences online and can't do them, they're resorting to taking photos themselves. So to zoom back a little bit out of that, the reason why I'm talking about that is when people identify what Syncify is trying to achieve and resonate with it and get behind our mission and want to join our company before they ask about position ask about salary or that kind of thing they're already in line with our culture because our culture is based on delivering that that future that future thing on top of that sam and i are very different people i am as you can see not exactly a wallflower um i'm very i'm very talkative i'm slightly extroverted i do this with my hands when i'm trying to make points um and that can actually you know wind some people up but I, it gets me over the line i'm pretty uh, i have a set list of tasks that are this big during the day i go bah, 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 and i get through them and i do this kind of stuff as well um sam on the other hand is more introverted he's more calculated he's calmer he's cooler he's generally the opposite of me and all the good things that i'm crap at so what we do is we listed basically the five no ten things that we did not like about each other and only founders like us can do this. Honestly, we listed the 10 things we do not like about each other. And then we created the polar opposites to them. And those polar, op- those polar opposites formed the personality traits that we look for. So I'm inconcise. I ramble. I uh, go off on tangents. So the opposite trait of that is uh, does not go off on tangents, is concise, uh, makes specific points, that, that kind of thing, right? And we make 10 of these. And then we have these competency-based interview questions that basically find out and will score on this metric all these different, these, these different things. And it's, it's brilliant. It's, and it's basically been faultless so far. We then look for something called a rock star characteristic. So you're scored on this recruitment matrix. And if any of you guys want to go through this, by, by the way, I'm all up for involvement. If any of you guys want to go through one of these interviews with me just in preparation for anything else you want to do in the future, drop me an email. More than happy to help in any way I can. The other thing we look for is a rock star characteristic, something that sticks out in an interview that is clearly an overarching principle that you have that 
another company wouldn't pick up on. So willingness to learn is a massive one for us. So I am, I am stupid with a lot of things, like really stupid. But I get incredibly irritated when I don't know the answer things or when people can't explain things to me. I have to ask again and again until it's annoying, until people get annoyed at me. But that's that's something that I means that I, I can't, I have like a culture of improvement in my head. And being vulnerable to allow myself to be improve is really, really necessary because that means if I'm improving, the company is going to improve around me. There will be people who are like the hurricanes who just make like get everything done. It seems like they're scatterbrained, everything, but they get it done. It's all these different rock star characteristics. And when we employ people, they have to have one of these things. They have to have something that absolutely sticks out as like, woof. And it's and they get 10 points for it. So it's zero or 10 points. And that 10 points, they could have like five or six, a bunch of the other ones. But it's and it's out of a, it's out of a hundred, right? Or 110 uh, point system. You have to get over 70. But if you're on like 65 and suddenly you've got a rock star characteristic, suddenly you get you're on 75 and you're through the door. So a rock star characteristic is really important. When we first started recruiting, we actually said that people don't get in without one, but it's hard off one interview to do it. So that's that's a bit of our culture. Yeah, that's a really novel way to look at it. I've got one, second second half of this question. Sorry, just to answer is yeah. we're nomadic. So we take our company uh, different places in the world because we actually believe that sharing experiences together should be a part of company DNA. So we're in, we've been in Cornwall, the Southwest of England, because we're not actually the country. We're meant to be in Spain right now. Uh, we're going to Portland in a couple months time. We're going to go to Costa Rica at the, towards in the summer. Then we're going to go to Austin, Texas. I don't know why, but that's apparently where we should, where we're going for a bit. And then we're going to go to New Zealand and potentially at the beginning of next year, if not the end of this year. And we're going to take the whole company with us as we go, including interns. So we actually believe that sharing experiences in real life is incredibly important. And that can be transferred to the digital world. I agree with Eric. That's what I've heard. <laughs> Glad you're going to make it to the U.S. at least. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Certain parts. Some parts of the U.S. scare me. Like, well, if, you, if you end up you know, finding your way to Portsmouth, Ohio, let us know. I'll come. Yeah, fuck it. Oh, I swear all the time as well. I'll, def I'll definitely come to, yeah, why not? It'll be fun. <laughs> there is an airport. Um, all right. So one of the things that that kind of kicked off for me um, for Startup Weekend, you know, we really made this intentional push for teams and making sure like, hey, uh, team up with people that have a skill set that you don't have, uh, you know, to try and build this well-rounded team. And this was the first time that we had done this, of course. Uh, so we kind of just, we were, we were winging it the whole time, right. uh, but we absolutely wanted to make that a priority. And it's something that we really push for when we work with, with entrepreneurs. Um, so then my next question is about Syncify as a product, you know, you're the startup disrupting the scene. Uh, who are your competitors? Who, how would you describe your competitors? <laughs> so I know that's a standard question, but yeah. Yeah, it is a bit boring, but it's okay, David. I'll let you know. I'm joking. Uh, so so uh, I will try and be specific with my answer, but I have to kind of do the zooming back thing that my, my brain does. Um, mm. Companies break down into a few different categories. One can have an amazing brand. One can have an amazing utility function. So brand would be like Nike. One would be an amazing utility uh, function would be WhatsApp or Uber uh, another one would be uh, the viral coefficient or coefficiency, which basically means all my friends are here, so I'm going to be here, like Facebook. And the final one will be community. So a community would be a Strava or uh, an app like Peloton, which has that kind of stuff. So companies get really, really rich and famous and big by nailing one of these things. If you look at our competitors like Apple Podcasts or Spotify or I don't know, I guess Breaker just got acquired. One, Breaker would be a good example. Uh, these things. What they've done is they've nailed down functions that are dissimilar to ours. They are not good at one thing in particular that is to do with us. They are amazing at what they actually do, though. So Spotify is the best music media player available and podcast player, if I say it. Like, the UI is okay, like ours is going to be better, but it's an amazing one. So the way I look at it is like, why would Spotify want to try and step into a user to user community platform when they're making so much money doing such an awesome thing and their dev time is going to be spent creating more money and more happiness for the things they're already doing. They're absolutely mm -hmm. nailing what they're trying to do. 
Apple mm-hmm. Podcasts, it's bloatware. It's already on your phone when you down, download it. People are going to go to that anyway. And despite the privatization of podcasts and the things that they want to do in the future, their intention to have shared experiences is not on the, not, not on the agenda. So for us, the closest competitor we're going to have is if someone like Twitch comes along and starts going, hey, we're really interested in the podcast world. Or if Audible comes along and starts going, hey, yeah, becoming social is probably like on our, on our, on our like timeline, but not, not just yet. But for Audible to start socializing, they would have to almost reinvent the wheel. And Audible is, I have an Audible account. I listen to stacks of audiobooks. Why, again, would they do something that gets them away from the dance? They have bottom lines, investment, and all these different things. Why would they start to, start to like, do anything? I think, I think uh, VR is something that's going to really get, like, get in the way of any kind of digital experience. I think the, the use of virtual reality is going to completely take the gaming on its head. It's going to take any... Like, why would I listen to a podcast with some friends when I can basically be in the same room with them uh, playing weird golf? Uh, in virtual reality, I mean, I think that could turn anything on its head. To be honest with you, and I think if you were to, if any of you got a couple of quid lying around or dollars, I would, I would put that into some bright virtual reality companies that are that are privately held and don't belong to Facebook, etc. That'd be my bet. That, right, don't belong okay. to, to Facebook. Yeah. Uh, so I have one more question, and then while I'm asking this question. If everyone else who is uh, attending the event, go into that question section here on the right-hand side and give a thumbs up to two or three questions that you think are really important and, uh, and you, you want to ask. And what we're going to do is uh, I am going to uh, – well, actually, Derek is going to go through and he's going to look at the questions with the most uh, thumbs up and he is going to ask those people – uh, if they want to come on stage to to ask their question uh, to Jack, uh, it makes it a little bit more fun. So, in the meantime, while you all are are doing that, um, Jack, my question for you is: What have you been doing since TechStars? Um, you mentioned TechStars made that that hundred thousand uh, dollar investment uh, pre seed fund. Mm. What have you been doing with it? What have you been doing since since then to to grow this business uh well i've been trying to plan a holiday which hasn't been going very successfully uh that's been a real letdown to be honest with you um one of the things i've been doing is i've been i mean so i'm in control of the investment uh and i am i'm in charge of two things i'm in charge of growth and i'm in charge of investment so one of the things i do i split my day my day is basically talking to you guys and people like you and trying to inspire, inspire the next level or next generation of entrepreneurs, especially in the tech things, especially tech for good is particularly what I'm interested in. Uh, spending time talking to you guys, um, letting you hear and acknowledge and understand what Syncify is trying to do. Because then if you ever do decide that you like podcasting or you want to start your own podcast, I'm inviting you all to start your own podcast, by the way. It is not too late to start your own podcast. Do it. We will help you in any way we can to do it. We'll host you, all the rest of it. So... Half the time I spend promising people things like that. <laughs> and the other half I spend uh, talking to investors and telling them about the future of social audio, um, how people are going to basically take all media and all media is going to become social. So those are the two things I've been mainly, mainly responsible for. As a company, we've been looking to improve the product, get it to the point where we can actually test it with a bunch of people. Um, you guys are already down to kind of be part of our alpha testing. Uh, I think I've already sent the alpha to you david or i may have sent to derek but i can basically send you guys the alpha product to play around with and as a community you'll have a bit of a tool uh get some feedback and then working towards our official launch which is in four or five weeks um so yeah no rest for the wicked just yet well i would absolutely love to to join that uh alpha test uh like i said i would oh i feel like i am the person that would want to use that type of product cool so yeah, and can you remind me what that email address was real quick? I'm just gonna put that in the chat. So I'm gonna put it. I'll put it in the chat for you, uh, David, because that's just you know that's a. The easy kind of way to there we go, and uh, yeah, that's me. You'll see it because it says co-founder Syncify. Um, <laughs> it'd be weird if that wasn't me. I'll also post my. I'm always really keen as well because if you guys don't have LinkedIn, right? Like, get LinkedIn. Honestly, it's just it's a really decent tool to just. Um, 
do anything and it's never too early to have a, a LinkedIn account. So I will whack my LinkedIn on there and feel free to connect with me as well because I'm always up for just answering questions. Uh, I take it really seriously when, when I have things like this because I want to generally help and set you guys on a good path. Absolutely. Uh, so I think what we're going to do now is, Derek, if you could pick a, uh, a question here uh, for someone to to come up and ask their question. And I will leave that up to you for the technical details of actually doing that. I can't hear Audrey if she's speaking. Can you guys hear? I've never uh, used this before, so I wasn't sure. I don't know how to turn my video on or anything, but um, mm -hmm. thank you for picking me. Uh, my name is Audrey Schieser, and I am a senior at Shawnee State. Um, and my question for you is, as a business owner myself, um, I'm always trying to pick other business owners' brains. Um, I'm very inspired by business owner stories. I want to know how they did it. Um, and so my question for you is just, what is one major piece of advice that you always go to when you tell somebody who is trying to start their own business? That's probably like an Amazon voucher question. Yeah, it is. Uh, I didn't point out, but the people who ask the best questions will get Amazon vouchers. Uh, also, people who have asked me questions I don't have not answered before in my entire time, bearing in mind I've been asked like 10,000 questions, will get an Amazon voucher as well. So by all means, like, come up with some good ones. Uh, okay. What well, was one major piece of advice that I would, I would give like a business owner that I've kind of asked myself before or or one that I like, I hold dear to me, and is making, and it's is about making a positive impact as well, right? I'm just looking at your question now. Yeah, uh, one that you kind of hold dear to you. Okay, I have really strong principles myself, like me personally. Um, despite any idea that I have that could potentially be worth millions or billions or whatever, I will always hold my values in the highest regard as opposed to shortening, uh, as opposed to cheapening out or, or selling out just because I can pivot. What that potentially means is down the life cycle of you creating a product, you will hit, and especially if you're trying to launch a business now and you're passionate about it, if it's a too good com to do good company, someone will come along and look at your to do good, to do good company and go, hey, have you ever thought about applying this to the business world or using the technology to... Um, change the way that this business practices and have be, get paid this or become a consultant to do this instead of, you know, doing it yourself and building a product. I would write down something that is incredibly valuable, valuable, valuable to you personally. I would then write out why that is insanely valuable to the business as you as a CEO slash director. And I'd pin those to your fucking keyboard for the next five years as you start doing this. Because if you are really, I see your owner chief executive officer Appalachian, Appalachian Trail rings a bell in my head. I would write those down and I'd be like, okay, I will not be compromised personally on what I'm trying to achieve. And I will not be compromised on a business level of what I'm achieved based on my own principles. That means no matter what you do, you will go to work feeling really positive about what you're trying to achieve and your morals will not be compromised. I like that very much. Thank you. No worries. Thanks for your question. That's an awesome answer. All right, Derek, I'm going to leave it up to you uh, once again for our next question here. Can you guys see me and hear me? What's up, buddy? Can you? Okay. Um, okay, so uh, one of my questions was that uh, once you realized that there was an opportunity for your business, um, like what was your first step towards actually like starting it like for myself I've had like a few ideas where it's like well this might be a a gap in the market but then it's like well how do you actually make it real good question um, okay so cool, cool thing here so for start there are gaps in the market if, if you look at a marketplace you're going to be able to figure out many many gaps in the marketplace what will stop your business from being a success is the fact that you probably weren't that passionate about solving that problem. You just found you just you just found the problem in existence and fed a business towards it, which means when you first don't get your paycheck after one, two, three months, you're fine. But six months down the line, you're like, OK, this is a drain. I didn't don't really give a shit about this. I thought I can make some money. So what I would do is uh, really find a solute a problem 
that you absolutely really really want to like a, a comp- like solve so something that you are you're genuinely like this annoys me that this is not being solved i am i am feeling bad about this mine was i my dad lives on his own in spain i miss him dearly i don't share things with him all the conversations dominated around what i bloody say and you guys know already how much i freaking talk so imagine how he feels right i have no share experience with him in my head if i could just share an experience with my dad that was really like hyper casual low level connection just something i would feel happier he would feel happier we'll have shared an experience together right this was a problem that i could solve using technology my first step towards actually achieving that as i was just saying to to audrey said and go was i when sam came with the idea i wrote down how i how i would use it how is this going to work and the second thing i would do second thing i did was i would talk to people about it i would talk to three four five people and i they were your best friends in the world and i would take everything they say and i would be very very willing to cancel the whole thing and to get it all demolished and uh understand that it was a crap idea and mm-hmm. i'd be completely non-loyal to it and then what i would do is i would go and talk to anyone you can within the industry and explain the same idea again and if they go oh this is interesting then that's when you know so be be that so in answer to your question to be more specific one of the first things steps i would do is get it validated by talking about it to people who give a shit about you and give a shit about this opportunity and be willing to throw it away or be willing to like absolutely do everything you can to accomplish it because there's no there's no as someone who went through eight nine months and gave up all their personal money um and all the career to do to step into this world i would not have been able to do and get to where i am without being 100% happy to do that Okay, thank you very much for your answer and your time to talk to us. No, it's Kevin. Thanks. That's very polite. One of the things uh that we hear a lot are people are afraid to ask people about their idea. Uh and and we always tell them that it's if you can't ask people about it, if you can't talk to people about it, nothing's going to happen anyways, so. No. You might put yourself out on a limb there. Yeah, exactly. Hopes are poorly executed ideas. All right, Destiny, uh, what is your question? Can you hear me? I can. You've got a wonderful name, Destiny Doctor. Thank you. Um, how did you promote Syncify? Like, a lot of people don't really listen to podcasts. And um, did you use, like, Google Search Engine or Facebook or Instagram? And I know TikTok is taking over a lot of the younger people's worlds now. So would you think about promoting your business on TikTok or? Okay. What to you? What what qualifies is not that many people listen to podcasts. Well, I think of more people watch TikTok than podcasts. So I think a lot of people do watch podcasts, but more people watch TikToks, in my belief. That's 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 probably true. But if I told you that three hundred fifty million people listen to podcasts worldwide, and if they were willing to pay one dollar a month for that kind of thing then suddenly we're talking about a business that could be worth tens of billions of dollars within a couple of years right yeah so that's that's the kind of scaling idea so one of the things i'd say and i and i'll get to your question in seconds work before you and this goes back goes back to the question before when you establish your market potential be really punishing on how and like really willing to like take away numbers as opposed to add under add numbers and be really really willing to go after a market that might only have 500 to 100,000 uh, uh users in it because if thanks man because if those people are willing to spend 10 15 20 dollars a month on it your business is going to be worth an absolute fortune in no time at all if you can nail that market um and to go on to go on to your your question i do do things that we because we do things in no and we're not live we do things that do not scale we do things that don't make sense to massive companies because by doing by spending I I run budgets for millions of dollars across TikTok I was UK's first ad partner in for TikTok TikTok I've done Facebook Snapchat TikTok Pinterest Tumblr any 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 kind of paid social platform I I've, I've I've done it one of the things that that does is it, it takes the power that I have to communicate my product to people 
And I am not willing yet to stop having these conversations with people to be challenged about how I feel about it. So my route to market is going to be doing this for as long as humanly possible, manly, manually and manly signing people up to use Thinkify, wondering why specifically they're not using it and getting them to explain to me why they feel they do not want to use the app. That is my route to market. That is my marketing so far. It is, it is me and talking about it and being challenged. And every time I'm challenged on it, I have to keep going back to like, okay, I'm doing this for this reason. Is it making sense? Yes. Destiny's asking why I'm not doing this. Is she right or am I right? Should I be doing it this way or should I be doing it the other way? Should I be using TikTok? Maybe I should be using TikTok. But I, I, aren't, I have to make sure that I'm, I, I'm the one people say no to to begin with until the product is great. When the product is great, oh, I will drop in quickly. You guys should all uh, listen uh, or let me just read this article uh, while I'm on it. Otherwise, I forget uh, about product market fit. Uh, super. Anything forward? Yeah, right. So read this article about product market fit. And this is when you'll know uh, when you should start uh, marketing because not questions in chat. This is when you know that you should start using marketing because you've hit this level of product market fit. So until the point, 40% of all people I talk to uh, would be disappointed that they don't get the chance to use Syncify. At that point, I will start using marketing. And my first go-to will be hacking into paid social. So I'll be running uh, growth hacking campaigns across like Snapchat, TikTok. And then I'll move on to the bread and butter, which is Facebook. Then I'll do some guerrilla marketing. Uh, but I'm actually going to go after guys like you and basically get you to be incentivized to start your own podcast by paying you. So I'll go, hey, David, um, I think you could do a really good podcast with Destiny. Why don't you guys start a podcast and uh, we'll sponsor it. And you guys basically just bring all the people that you want to listen to it onto our platform and talk to them. And you're doing a good thing. They're learning from you. Marketing. Yay. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. I really appreciate it. No, thank you so much. So really building off the, the influencer marketing there. Uh, mm. That makes sense. Create your own influences as well. Create mm. your own influences. That's what TikTok did. TikTok basically made people zero famous to 100 famous real mm -hmm. quick. So, you know. Absolutely. I know Jason Lovins isn't here, and I know he's got an entrepreneurial marketing class. He's the one that teaches it, so I'm glad he is here for this. Sweet. Uh, but let's move on. Uh, Chase, you're up next. Yeah. Hey, uh, what's up, Jack? So, um, so I just, uh, I just recently launched my, um, my uh, fitness Instagram um, page. Um, it's uh, just, yeah. Yeah, right. um, it's something I've wanted to do for a long time, but um, you know, I recently got a you know, certified trainer. Um, so I'm new into it. Um, and, you know, eventually it's something I want to take further. Um, eventually, you know, open up a gym, um, you know, selling apparel, selling, um, you know, supplements, um, pr making programs, stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of stuff I want to do with it. And there's a, like a lot of things right now that I'm like trying to work on. And, um, but so my question was, um, I understand there's a lot of aspects to focus on when you're first starting your own business. Um, but what is just, just one or two kind of main things that you would say are the most important aspects to really focus on? Okay. What are you trying to achieve? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to start this company. So I want to make money from it. And I also want to help people. Through, What's the priority? What's that? What's the priority out of those two? A priority for well, probably making money. So why are you starting a gym? <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. The thing is, that's, so that, that's the thing. I've crippled your idea, Ryan, about five seconds of just asking what you really want to do. Chase, what do you want to achieve? Like, if you want to achieve money, then don't start a gym and training because that's not going to be the quickest route to getting loads of money. And if, if I ask you why you want to make money, do you want to make money for money's sake or is there something you want to achieve with that money? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I would say I would say it's something I'd like to achieve with the money. Yeah. So, so with, with me, right, I, I have, a, just put it in person, so... I have a rescue dog called Bertie. Okay. Yeah. I love him. He's, he's my, my treasure. I, he's over there asleep on the floor. Right. I, I love him more than anything. I have a, a goal and I want to buy Bertie a lawn. So I basically want, and in America, that sounds crazy, right? 
you guys uh you have like so much space in ohio or wherever the hell you've got like ah, loads of space right we're in ireland and space is running out i want a nice house a really nice house which is a really nice lawn because bertie loves lawns okay he loves freshly mown grass that is something that is important to me that is one of the things i want to achieve if you had said to me straight off the bat you want to fundamentally improve people's lives by improving their fitness and health patterns i'd have gone okay let's work out how we can do that and draw the line back from there to you owning your first or selling your first piece of gym instruction uh or gym equipment or doing like that the fact that you're more incentivized towards money to me says that there are things that you want to achieve monetarily in order for you to have loads of things, in order to make a load of money with one, one person and do anything, you need to start playing with money really, really fast. You need to get really good at understanding what money can do and how to spend it. And if you were wanting to get do an Aperol, Aperol company and in the fitness world, or you just know a bit more about fitness, I would learn Facebook marketing really fast. I would go on to Alibaba. I would buy 100. This is very Gary Vee, by the way. People have probably heard Gary Vee a bunch of times. I would go on to Alibaba. I would uh, find, I'd buy a hundred pieces of a uh, hundred uh, gym wraps or whatever, or hand wraps. I would develop a marketing campaign on Facebook and YouTube at all. And I would try and sell all hundred of those. And if you are still remotely interested in doing this afterwards, then by all means go ahead. But I would do, I would lean test your idea and I would try and break your idea before you spend any more time on it. Because I, as a fitness influencer, you're in one of the most crowded markets of all time. You'd have to bury, you'd have to go so far into your soul to figure out how you'd be able to differentiate that you may end up just being like, you know what, fuck it, I don't want to do this anymore. So I'd hide, as I said a couple of like, questions ago, absolutely ask yourself why you're trying to achieve it. Don't go after another way of making making money. Try and figure mm-hmm. out what you're trying to accomplish. And if you want to accomplish something that means something that's beyond money, go after it. But if you just want to make money try and find a way of making money it's really really simple and i would say drop shipping facebook marketing that kind yeah. of stuff is where you can make it cool thank you i appreciate that no worries man <laughs> by the way shout out for the uh, pokemon uh, poster behind you that is uh, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't go unnoticed buddy like i've got mad respect for that. so yeah <laughs> thanks man that's all right all the best. hi can you hear me oh i can hear you Okay, awesome. Well, first off, hello. It's nice to meet you. Um, Second, um, so your business is such a fresh outlook on things. And while I know why you started the company and the things that you were saying on social media and things like that, at what point did you decide that it was time to share experiences differently? At what point did I decide to start sharing experiences? Okay, I, 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 so I'm a board member of a men's health charity called Man Down Cornwall. Uh, men have, this is going to get quite dark quite quickly, by the way. So hold on, to, hold on to your seats. Um, there are more men kill themselves uh, under the age of 44 than any, any other uh, type of dying. Like men kill themselves three times more than women. Uh, there's just a load of men who kill themselves under the age of 44. Uh, outlets of, um, trying to become like doing this less are social events um watching tv with friends uh going to football matches soccer matches talking to each other etc 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 my the charity that i support it basically creates events in person and there's a just bunch of coffee no alcohol biscuits talking it's like aa for men with mental health problems when I realized there is absolutely no real way of doing this online successfully other than a Zoom call, I actually realized that shared experiences themselves have been uh, only prioritized the people who are in the online world anyway. So people who pre-exist in gaming, who pre-exist in using tech equipment like online biking and all that kind of stuff. And what that led me to what that led me to want to build is something that is incredibly easy to use that you might want to be doing anyway. So audible people like listening to the radio. Everyone listens to the radio. My granddad used to listen to the radio. My dad listens to the radio. My route of market to creating something or to getting the people who I care about involved with something has to be something that they're already doing. So I thought that, okay, if I if people can listen to radio, they're going to listen to podcasts or they're going to listen to um, 
books like audio books or anything like that so step one has to be within within that world if i can create shared experiences in this world i can get all the people i really care about who are struggling onto this platform and it's going to be really easy for me to do it if i can make sure that they understand this is a really good way of getting getting better mental health so that was probably like the, the cursor for me wanting to really kind of step in and change the way shared experiences are I also think that there is an outrageous amount of people who are between the ages of 14 to 20 who are going to spend uh, in excess of 30 hours a week on their phones from now until the next the next kind of generation or until someone just burns the phones or a superbug wipes out all technology. Like I genuinely believe they are fucked if we can't do something about it. I don't want people to put their smartphones down. What I want them to do is engage in more healthy social experiences with it. The current digital social experiences online are crap. They are uh, facetious. They are narcissistic. They do nothing for people's mental health. They do not better. There are not, there's no learning platforms. So encouraging them to just use their time better is exactly what I'm about as well. Um, and I also, lastly, I, I believe that there is a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a sci-fi geek. Uh, I, I really like Warhammer. Uh, you know, there's little figurines. Uh, there's a huge backstory of, and this is crazy. You guys are going to be like, what? Uh, there's a whole backstory of lore and L O R E and super crazy, uh, stories behind that. And it's just, there's loads of books about it and I'm deep into it. I don't know anyone I can freaking talk about with this kind of stuff or share that experience with. Like my friends don't give a crap about it. Hardly. I mean, someone say something in the comments if anyone knows at all what I'm talking about here. There's no way of me doing about it. But I could start a podcast talking about that. And I bet you I could get to a thousand people. Uh, there you go, Derek. Nice. So I can reckon I could get to a thousand people. And if I was interesting enough, people would probably pay a dollar a month to hear it. Suddenly, if I've got a thousand people paying a dollar a month, I have Jason, my man. I suddenly have a business that is twelve thousand dollars a year based on my absolute hobby that I love to pieces. This is an untapped market. This is a shared experience digital marketplace. That is a hundred percent what I'm about. So I gave you three answers there. I hope at least one of them you liked. But thanks for your question. Yes, thank you so much. I I think that was really deep and and awesome. <laughs> so thank you. Hello. What's up, Tom? I'm all right, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Where are you from? I'm from the Netherlands, but I live with English people here, so... And you've got a Man City shirt on. Oh, of course, Man City. That's it. Okay. Right. okay, all right, we'll move on from that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think are important financial aspects to consider before you start working your idea into existence? And like, and when should you like stop your idea? Oh, hang on. Is anyone else being disconnected here? My things have gone weird. Uh, your screen went dark for a second, but you're back. Are we back? Yeah. Did you hear me or you want to repeat it? Hang on. Can you guys see me and hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. I heard your, I heard your first question. Um, what is, what, what do I have to consider financially? I think was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. How much money I have in the bank? How long? How long I can survive, survive on that amount of money? How long mentally can I survive on that money? Am I met, am I willing to sacrifice that? And how long until I'm going to be able to pay myself again? Okay. And when do you think you like? Because at some sometimes people try too hard to like <laughs> achieve it. While it's impossible. Like when should you cut your losses and just maybe work on a new idea? Oh, I think if you're passionate enough, your idea will just take different, will just warp into different forms until you've completed it. Like I, I, I probably will set up something different at some point, but like one of my huge goals is to reforest uh, the Great Britain. Uh, I think the amount of damage we do to the rainforest is inexplicably poor. I think the amount of, we, we've deforested our country so much over a period of thousands of years that I, I honestly think that we're, we're just, we're just, we're just terrible. That's not just, that's a future thing I want to accomplish. Right. Mm -hmm. that's not to say that my idea now is something that I'm not going to spend the next five years on. I'm willing to sacrifice a load of stuff to make change. And I'm capable of making change in this world that's right now. If your ambition is to be an entrepreneur, then you're going to be, you're probably going to have about five to 10 ideas that are crap that you're going to start and close down within a month. 
when one idea makes its way to three months in, it'll probably make its way to six months. And if it's still alive after six months, take it to 12 months, honestly. Okay. And then if you are still, if you have three customers who are paying you, remember, if you have one customer who is paying you for your service, you have a fucking business, right? And always remember, always remember, people forget that if one, if one person is willing to pay you for something, you have a business and people are scared to call it a business. They just, they're terrified of doing it. So always come back to what you're doing. Just because you might not be making millions of pounds doing it, it doesn't mean that it's a failure. So you can have something that's great. But if your ambition is to become a billionaire, then you can say goodbye to that business. But it's not a failure. You don't need to close it down. If it is not making any money, you've put everything into it. And you can close it down with a massive smile on your face because you're willing to take the risk. And guess what? 99.9% .9 of people won't. Okay. Well, thank you for your answer, man. All right, thanks. Like Kevin said, thanks for your time to talk to us. Oh, it's helpful. So. I'm enjoying it, man. We love it. It's good fun. All right, thank you. No worries. Hello. Hello, Danny. I'm Danny. <laughs> Hi. Um, first of all, I want to compliment you. Your you your answers have been really. Um, it's going to sound cheesy, but they've been really inspirational and just really like a breath of fresh air to hear. So um, just thank you. <laughs> um, the, so my question is, I am an avid podcast listener. Um, I, every, yeah, every morning I have a very long commute. So I'm constantly listening mostly to the same two podcasts, but I do every now and then switch back and forth. Yeah. Um, so my question is with your app, how do you plan to partner with specific or not partner? Um, how do you plan on getting the content onto your app? Is it you creating or sponsoring the podcasts or will you say, for instance, you know, I listen to my favorite murder. How would you get you their podcast? Love that podcast. Uh, yes. I'm wearing a stay out of the force shirt. No, no. <laughs> um, but yeah. So how do you plan on getting that already really popular huge communities are already built around these podcasts how mm -hmm. what you know what's your strategy for getting those onto your app luckily like so, so I, I i i'm going to say this three parts the answer but i probably will forget the third one before i've even, even stopped so um get prepared for that 99.9 percent .9 of all podcasts are free to listen to via an rss feed so I do not need, I can just literally go onto the web, a website of uh, My Favourite Murder and uh, go and uh, click on RSS feed, plug into Syncify, you'll be able to start listening to that on Syncify. I guess the, the back question to you, which would be rhetorical, is if you knew that I was listening to My Favourite Murder and, and you knew that you could see me listening to it and you knew that you could see a place where I was going to comment on it and 20 or 30 of your friends were on it and listening to it, would you rather listen to your podcast on your own as an isolated experience considering how much of a fan you are or would you rather see and enjoy what other people are saying about it? Because if that is, if that is where you, what you want to do, if you, want to, you love it to the point where you want to enjoy it with other people, that is exactly what Syncify is there for. So it might only take one, two, three, four of you but if you then start talking to other people, then you'll naturally attract things. It's like a pub, right? Are you going to go to the pub, which is empty, that smells like just normal, like, like really clean and there's like a TV on? Or are you going to go past one where there's a bunch of like drunken Irish people just going like and having a hell of a time? You're going to go and stop in the one with a bunch of people having a crazy time, right? Because that's what makes all the sense in, the, in all the sense of the world. The second thing is uh, that you that I, I'd say is uh, we, we, we plan to uh, incentivize people who have like hobbies which have maybe like hundreds or two three hundred four hundred like community members and we're going to incentivize them to start podcasts we're going to be like you are a super fan of dog food curation i've looked just literally looking at dog food that's why i said it could have thought of anything else better but dog food curation right there is probably going to be you're probably going to if you love this hobby have found this community somewhere and created it either on reddit or whatever if you are that passionate, you will be able to create a podcast about it. And the first thing you can turn around to these people and go like, hey, we're all talking about it anyway. I've created a podcast. Come and listen to it on here and you'll be able to pay attention and you'll be able to drop a few comments around it. And voila, you have an audience. And that audience will attract more of an audience, more and more and more of an audience. The third part is that um, you were talking about, so that content will also be unique on Syncify if you, if you want it to be. It doesn't have to be, but why wouldn't it be, right? 
the third part is like these huge audiences and things like that's they they they're going to exist and their brands will monetize but i still think that only i think if the podcast market is where it is now what is there? there's like 15 million podcasters now in the world i think we're probably at five percent of all the podcasts that are ever going to be created are created now and uh, re- real realistically and i think that the turning of the tide will see independent podcasters create a place where they can see their communities which will be syncify and talk to their communities which will be syncify monetize their communities which will be on syncify and do it incredibly easily which will be us as well so without going to a sales pitch ish ness i believe that's really how 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 i see it i hope that's answered your questions yeah thank you very much appreciate no it. thanks danny nice artwork in the background as well i think it was a piano but I didn't get to see you can put it in the comment I was like seeing what people have got in their rooms. Uh, Brian's uh, Brian. I can't see at all. So, Brian, are you Brian? Are you on? Huh? Brian. Hello. Hi, Brian. Hey, Brian, I a... had a question about investors. Cool. Um, during the coronavirus pandemic, I had. Uh, how would you find investors who would be more reclusive? What would be a good platform to find investors on? Um, there's a load of, uh, so we have this thing called SEIS in the UK, which is the Startup Enterprise Investment Scheme, which basically means because we're high risk, anyone who invests in us is like, is this going to like financial geeky now, is a, uh, is allowed to have like a, a capital gains kind of refund, which basically means we're a tax break for them. So people are always trying to invest it to invest money in us. Um, I'd say that it's all about getting also, if you have access to one investor who likes you, they usually have two or three investors who like them. If an investor doesn't like you because you're not in their investment thesis at the end, which I've had a hundred times, by the way, like a hundred times, despite how you think I'm communicating with you now, if you don't think I get rejected 10 times a day, by investors, you're very wrong. Uh, I I will always ask the last five minutes very cool. Uh, do you know anyone? Is there any platform out there? Is there any venture capitalist you think is going to be interested in us? So always be willing to ask anyone, even if they don't like you or don't like your idea, for an introduction. That's another thing I'd, I'd always, always recommend. Um, there's also a lot of incredibly wealthy people out there that you will be your friends of your friends. And if you really have an idea that you think is valuable and can make serious money, don't be afraid to ask your original network that you have for introductions to anyone. Or you'd be surprised how many people who are, you know, between the ages of like 25 to 40, who are independently quite wealthy with 5, 10, 15K, like lying around the bank. And if you're bootstrapping a company, 2k 3k uh check signed for a company worth let's say 300 grand might be able to keep your company alive for six weeks if you've got five people willing to do that then you suddenly have 30 weeks worth of runway so you can fund your company as as many ways as you see fit one of the things i'd say is do not be afraid to like go out on your shield when you do it if you have pride then you're gonna you're gonna have a real bitter pill to swallow when it comes to, and taking money. If you tell a bunch of investors that they're wrong because they don't want to invest in you, you're gonna have a really crap time. Thank you for your time. No worries, Brian. Pleasure. Ah, uh, here's Jason, assistant professor, marketing. Oof. There we go, Jason. What you got? Jason, no. I know you're on here. You you posted in the chat not too long ago. There he is. I can't hear you, Jason. Whoa, look what's going on in your room. I can't hear you, man. Can anyone else hear him? Let me see if I can find him. Christian. I can hear Jerrica's making noise. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Jerrica's baby's making noise. Let's see if I can uh, find Jason's question here. Jason. Uh, Jason, I see one of your questions here in the uh, in the thing. It, it asks about uh, your revenue model. Uh, do you have paid advertising, commercial breaks, uh, or fees and charges to uh, content creators, for example? Is that is that the one, Jason? Nod your head. Yes, nice, 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 nice. Uh, I also kind of want to see what's going on. It looks like you're in a church. You got like clean glass windows. 
It's funny because you can't, you, you, all you can do is shake your head and nod so I can basically fill in the answers that I, I want for that, <laughs> for that, that kind of thing. Uh, revenue model. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, if you enjoy, let's say, so if I enjoy, I am so fed up of being uh, sold on Facebook and sold to other companies that I don't want to do. I don't really go on Facebook. I'm fed up being sold. I would rather be charged to enjoy a private network or enjoy a thing that I, I want to enjoy. Um, which means, and so it's like paying for a Netflix subscription. I Netflix aren't selling my information, my Netflix account, but then aren't targeting or, or, or spamming that out on the internet. And if they are, I'm not. I'm not really part of that because I'm not on Facebook anyway. So on that, based on that hypothesis, I'd be willing to say that people are nowadays, especially generation at university, are more willing to pay to enjoy a more private subscription-based model, enjoying media with their friends. That is my hypothesis that the whole company is based on. I think there is a price for privacy that people are willing to pay when you have a tech ethical company like ours. And I think that we can scale that company up to two, three million paid people within the next three or four years. Nothing crazy. Five dollars a month gets you access to a bunch of different podcasts that either your friends, family or network are creating. will give you the communities you're after to have massively good mental health benefits to, to you and just make you feel happier. From the podcast creating side of things, there is absolutely no way right now that 99% of the podcast the creators are making money. My, my favorite murder, Joe Rogan, and a, maybe like 10,000 others are making serious cash through targeting through a CPM. So, you know, I'm, the other, you all know this, but like a CPM is basically the amount you can charge a thousand people who, who will go onto a, go onto a website. Uh, and they don't make a lot per CPM, but the fact there are millions of people are doing it. If I, have an, if I have a website that has 10,000 people visiting a month, I might be able to make $500. Maybe, maybe if I have 500 subscribers, I can make $2,500 a month. Now, you've got to think of like the difference in price points between that. It is way better to have an audience who gives a fuck about you, who stays around and to listen, engages with you, than to have a blasé large audience, like 100%. So... I believe there is a room there for micro podcasters or growing it first to market podcasters on Syncify to monetize their audience that they actually get to communicate with. Syncify breaks down the third wall. The audience will talk to each other. The host will be able to talk to the audience. That's not available anywhere else. So that's the two things. And the hosts will pay a small percentage fee of everything they make, but we'll do everything in our power to support them as well. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Wow. How exciting. Jack, thank you for doing this today. I really hope that the students pay close attention to what you said, especially to Chase's point about your mission must come first. Uh, the money is obviously a function of a business for sure. And I once worked for a hospital that was run by nuns and I had a nun who always warned me. She said, no margin, no mission. Mm -hmm. But obviously, whatever it is you really want to do at the end of the day, that is what is critically important. So if you're thinking about striking out in a business, think about what your outcomes are, not just the money. Think about what it is you're really doing. And remember right. those lessons where we talk about mission statement. But anyway, thank you for your breakdown of revenue streams. Awesome. This isn't church, by the way. This is a replica of uh, Lord of the Rings, a uh, bag in the Hobbit hole. So, oh, my God. So, you guys yeah. are cool. I, that, is, that is, I mean, I'm very impressed. Also, cool. Jeff, but that's that's fun. that's fantastic. Good going, Jason. Thanks, man. Thank you. That's so original. All right, I think we have time for one, uh, maybe two more questions, and then um, we'll be back out in the tables for uh, conversation, if you'd like. So, Jerrica, you're up next. I apologize for the crying baby. <laughs> um, so I know startups can be challenging. Um, and as a mom of two, I'm always trying to balance like starting a business and school and, you know, my home life. So when things get tough, what do you, what do you, what keeps you going? What do you recommend? And I'm going to mute my mic. So no, bless her. I, I cry all the time in front of people. It's, it's, it's just part of the past of being a startup owner. So you should never be embarrassed when you have kids that cry that you're not in control of. Um, really, really good question. Fan By the way, um, big up to you for even considering those kind of things. Because I imagine if I had those kind of levels of stresses, I wouldn't be giving a thought to 
uh, starting business. So I have huge respect for you, Jerrica. Thank and you. A massive shout out. And thanks for your question. Um, I actually am really bad at managing my own stress. I actually, in November, I definitely reached a, bur- a stage of burnout when I was talking to David for the first time and those kind of, the, you guys, I was, I was at the point where I was working so much that I was kind of not being me. I kind of wasn't even having a chance to be me. Um, I was compromising on personal relationships. I was compromising on my health and fitness, uh, which I take really seriously. Um, I have my own mental health struggles. I suffer with like, anxiety. I have my like, bouts of depression, which basically I can't control anyway. Um, what I do is I isolate times where you cannot fuck with me. And I know that's almost impossible as a mum to do that. But when you could be more adaptable, what I suggest you do is if you have a partner or someone or a support network at all, is you will have to organize times where you are in untouchable. If you don't have that support network, what you have, what I would encourage you to do is be incredibly present when your downtime is encroaching on you. It might be when one or both your kids fall asleep. It might be when they're not with you and you find yourself like doing the washing up or doing something that's on the computer. If you can quickly think, oh, I don't actually need to be doing this right now. I can take some time out for myself. Immediately do it. Imme- immediately do it. Like just drop your shit. And sometimes it's just it's just sitting there or sometimes it's watching some... I watch, um, I watch Pokemon, actually, not that long ago. It's all on Netflix. I went through 100, 100 episodes of it. Um, and I, I forgot I was even, I was even in, in, in the business. I also have this thing called the glory list. I don't know if you guys, this is the most anti startup thing that you're here. I have this thing called the glory list. So I'm a pescatarian, which I decided to do. Um, I, I run 160 kilometers a month. You guys need a mile. So do I, so 120 odd miles a month, hundred miles a month, make sure like these are things that I, I do. I will run hundred miles a month. I'll get in the freezing cold water at the Atlantic ocean, uh, three or four times a month. These are non-negotiables that are really good for my personal health. Do you know what I also do? I also make a list of the time where I'm going to have downtime, how many beers I want to drink, uh, how many cigarettes I might want to end up and end up smoking. If I even want to smoke weed, how much Battenberg slash KFC I want to eat. And I will make this horrible list of things that I'm going to do that I'm just going to set out three or four days. And every time I have a stressful moment, I'm like, Oh man, this, the glory list is coming. I'm going to be sinking into some serious beers. I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to see my friends. We're going to go to the pub for nine hours. I'm going to have to write off a whole of things. And you might, you might find it particularly difficult in your circumstances to, to like, uh, find that time. But I promise you there will be time coming and you're, and if you have this list of things that you want to do when like no one's watching or like no one's going to be bothering you, if you have that list to go to, all you have to do is go boom there. Like it's, it's there waiting for you. So make a list. Um, Chase said meditation. I totally recommend meditation. I, I find it possible to meditate. I cannot stop my mind. I'm always on, which is why I have to do things like uh, sci-fi audiobooks or running or something i can't switch off i just i'm i'm on until i pass out so but i definitely would recommend meditation as well but mine would be glory list for sure and uh being very present so you understand when the downtime is actually happening around you so you can take part in it but as i said uh jerica you've got me on linkedin uh happy to uh, answer any questions or if you want to have another zoom call with me or whatever about it then just just i'm happy to help you all right Thank you. I appreciate that very much. No that goes the same with anyone, by the way. Just just use me as a resource. Drop me any questions you like. This is this shouldn't just be like a one-off thing. Happy to come back and do it again. Awesome. Jack, okay. you're getting, getting a lot of really good responses in the chat. I want to thank you once again. Uh, I think that's the last question, David. So what we'll do is we'll end this session, but when I do, uh, you'll come to the lobby, which has virtual tables. And so if you guys want to have a conversation with Jack drop in uh, at a table and uh, you can ask some more questions as long as that's okay with you, Jack. I'm, f- I'm, I'm all in the clear by all means. Love it. Okay. David, is there anything else you want to say? I don't think so. Thank you all for joining today uh, and stick around. If you've got any, any, you know, off questions you want to ask. And uh, if you are interested in the entrepreneurial journey, not on entre- uh, the Shawnee entrepreneurship club, excuse me. Uh, let me know. Thanks everyone. Well, I have to press anything. Oh, thanks, everyone.